This is my partner's gaming laptop. It's an Asus Tough 15 inch. And last weekend I spent 12 hours getting Ubuntu and all of her programs to work nicely. This is my desktop computer that I use to play games, edit videos and browse the web. It's been running Linux Mint for about a year now and it was rock solid and perfectly configured out of the box. And here's my laptop running Fedora, same thing. Everything just works perfectly. And this got me thinking, what have I actually learned over the last year using Linux? What reflections do I have about the vastly different experiences people can have installing and using Linux? Let's talk about it. The first thing I've learned is that the switch to Linux can be really smooth, like what I experienced with my desktop PC and laptop. Or it can be quite painful, like what I had to do to get my partner's laptop working properly. The reason for this is usually to do with your computer's hardware, and how complicated it is. In the case of my gaming desktop, which uses a Ryzen 5 and an RTX 3070, there's nothing really to go wrong there. Linux Mint was really happy out of the box, and all of my software worked perfectly. The default display server and desktop environment, X11 and Cinnamon, also runs really well on this hardware. But on my partner's laptop, which previously ran Windows 10 and then Fedora, Linux was a pain to set up properly. Fedora was just awful, really unstable and constant issues. So I decided to try Ubuntu, which has ended up being fantastic, but it took me 12 hours to get there. Most of the grief was to do with the laptop's hardware, especially the fact that it has both built-in Radeon graphics and a GTX 1650 Ti. First of all, it was impossible to adjust the screen brightness. This was to do with which GPU was driving the display, and more importantly, which GPU driver could expose the physical brightness controls to the kernel. After I resolved that, and multiple other issues like slow app launch on boot, it now runs really well. What I'm trying to say is that it can be a mixed bag. This leads perfectly onto my next point, that is, once it's configured properly, it's usually really stable and a joy to use. Whether your Linux install requires no config or a lot, once it's set up, you can usually forget about it and just go and enjoy your computer day to day with significantly less hiccups than you'd get on a Windows machine. I installed Linux Mint on my desktop PC about a year ago and I can't remember the last time I had to fix anything or configure something. All of my Steam games run perfectly, DaVinci Resolve is solid and all of the normal day to day programs are flawless. This is one of my favourite things about Linux. Once you've nailed the configuration, it's usually such a good experience that you forget your operating system is even there. It just falls into the background and your applications and games take centre stage. And if you're one of those people who loves customising your OS, you can do that too. And once it's set, you can leave it alone and just use your computer like normal. Before we have a look at what else I've learned this year, let's check out this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing and more. They do it all, so if you've got an idea and a project, head onto their website for an instant quote. Enter your specifications and follow the prompts to make an order. It's super easy. PCBWay's 11th badge design contest is now closed. Winners will be announced on the 12th of June 2025, so stay tuned for that. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Check them out via the link in the description. The next thing I've learned is that patience and curiosity go a long way. I think it's fair to say that you'll probably run into some issues on your Linux journey, but if you've got even the tiniest bit of curiosity, you'll be able to troubleshoot and learn. The Linux experience rewards people who are willing to learn, even just that little bit more than the average computer user. And every extra thing that you learn gives you more power to create a computing experience that meets your every need. Sometimes people tell me that they want to switch to Linux but worry about whether their files will be deleted. I even had a commenter on one of my videos who said that they installed Linux and it, quote, deleted all their files. They went on to say, my boss wants to know when you can get my files back. That itself is revealing because it shows a lack of understanding of how operating systems and file systems work in general, and potentially a lack of understanding of what Linux even is, as if it's just a desktop theme. I usually tell these people to do some more research, or try installing Linux on a separate storage device. Or better yet, try Linux on an old computer or laptop that you're willing to experiment with. In any case, so long as you manage risk and are sensible with backing up your files and information, 
Being curious and just having a go is a great thing. And in taking that step, the learning begins straight away. The next thing I'd say, having spent about a year with Linux as my sole daily driver, is just how fulfilling it is to take back control of your computing experience and move away from big tech. I'd say that this is one of the biggest reasons I switched. Yep, Windows is annoying and I don't like it, sure. But the opportunity to consciously reject massive and powerful companies like Microsoft in favour of a project born out of passion, I think is really pleasing. I hated the idea that I could pay 200 Australian dollars for Windows, and then each day Microsoft gets to load it with the latest advertisements for their products and services, introduce intrusive programs marked as features that I didn't ask for, or suddenly they decide that they're not supporting my OS anymore and I have to pay for the new one. So in other words, you pay for a product, and then you become a product for Microsoft. It's like if you pay to disable ads on YouTube Premium and they started showing you ads anyway. Nobody would do that, right? Oh wait. It's such a decisive decision to reject big tech. Moving to Linux puts the power back in your hands. You get to customise and control your experience. You're not the product anymore. So the last thing I'd say I've realised over the past year is that Linux is not one size fits all. Different distros are better for different people. On well supported hardware, sure, distros like Ubuntu and Mint might fit like a glove for most people. But if you try installing Linux on your computer and everything seems like a pain, do some research to find out why, and then try something else. Try another distro, install a different piece of software, just experiment until you get it right. Old school Linux users will hate this coming from a young user, but my quick tip is to just use ChatGPT to diagnose. Feed it your system specs, make and model number, and the software you've tried installing. I found it to be really good at telling you in simple terms why something might not be working well. I did this in the case of my partner's laptop with the dual GPUs. ChatGPT explained really well why certain distros and display servers might not work well, and why, for example, Fedora was such a pain. The other aspect of this is that the distro you love for your computer might be useless for someone else. So if you're running Ubuntu or Mint on your computer and all of your hardware and software works great, why would you listen to the person who's aggressively telling you to install Arch Linux just because? Makes no sense, so choose the distro that works well for you. And then after you've done that, ignore the fact that I'm suggesting ChatGPT, which is big tech. <laughs> and that's about it for this video. Let me know in the comments where you're at in your Linux journey. I'd also be happy to answer any questions. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.